Welcome back everyone to the Thinkorswim tutorial series where today we're going to be learning how to customize our charts. Now jumping right in the very first thing we have to do is of course head up to our charts page and now looking down below you can see I've got a nice big chart pulled up for Tesla. This is actually the default chart that I expect every single one of you is going to see the very first time you log into Thinkorswim. But just so you know we can change every single thing about this chart. The background color, the candlesticks, what studies are on the chart, how many charts we're looking at, everything can be customized. If we go ahead and cover the basics real quick, the very first thing I see you guys changing is the time frame of this chart. Currently, if we were to look in the upper left-hand corner, what we're currently looking at is a yearly chart. So this chart goes back one year in time. Then it's telling us that each candlestick represents one day. So if we wanted to change that, we'll come up here to the time frame icon in the upper right hand corner. This will then display a list of favorites. So these are just the pre-made ones that Thinkorswim makes for us, but we could always customize this and put our own in here. So just as a quick example, if I wanted to change this to a five year time frame, I come up here to the time frame button. Looking down below, I'm gonna see I can make intraday charts or daily charts. Now, intraday charts are simply charts where the aggregation period is less than a day. So think of it like minute charts, five minutes, 10 minutes, hourly, anything less than a day. Whereas the daily charts are gonna be anything that includes a day or higher. So that could be daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you see down here, these are the different aggregations that we could use. Now, in my case, I wanna keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna leave it as a daily chart, but I'm gonna change the time interval to looking back five years instead of just one. We can then come down below and hit OK. And now you can see here I'm looking at a five-year chart. You can also see these icons at the bottom of the chart, which are simply showing us the historical earnings. We can see the historical splits. If Tesla happened to pay a dividend, we would also see the dividends displayed down here. But if you ever forget, if you just hover your mouse over it, it'll always tell you what it means. So in this case, it's telling you that the earnings were estimated to be $1.68 for that quarter and they actually had $2.54 of earnings. You can also see to the right, looks like they had a three for one split on August 25th of 2022, but it's pretty straightforward. Just hover your mouse over it and it'll tell you what it means. But next, moving on to the chart settings. So that's gonna include everything from these little grid lines that we see in the background to the color of the chart, to the types of candlesticks we're using, pretty much every random chart setting you could think of can be found up here using the gear icon in the upper right hand corner. So within this chart settings menu, we can change quite a few things, but a couple things I would adjust is first off showing my trades on the chart, just so I can see an actual display telling me when I bought Tesla, when I sold it, the price I bought and sold it for. It can be really useful to just see what we did in the past, but if you're day trading or scalping, trading in and out very, very quickly, I probably would not check mark this button Otherwise, your chart is going to be full with your previous trades. Besides that, the other one I would adjust is going to be the positions over here on the left-hand side. What I would probably do is go ahead and flip that over to show all. That just means if I've got a position on this stock, so if I had 100 shares of Tesla, or if I own the 215 call, those positions would actually be displayed on my chart now. So I'll be able to quickly see how many shares of Tesla I have, what price I have it at, or if I have any options on them. Besides that, if I wanted to change some of the overall appearance settings on my chart, I could always come up here to the appearance tab. And now looking down below, I could change the chart type over from a candlestick chart to a bar chart or a area chart. In my case, I actually do prefer the candlestick. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that back over. And then down here below, I could also adjust the color of my chart. So first off, if I wanted these green candles over here to be filled in, I can go ahead and check mark this box here. And if I wanted to change the color of those candlesticks, if I didn't want them to be green, I could always click on this little bubble here and flip it over to, let's say, teal. Now, I actually don't like the look of that, so I'm going to flip that back over to green. But I could also change things like the background appearance by coming down here to the bottom and clicking on the little black box to the left of background. Here, we could change it to a really dark chart or I could change it to a white chart, or I could go back to the way it was originally. We could also change the volume bars over here, which are currently just blue bars. I could go ahead and click on this little bubble here that says color as symbol ticks, and now those bars are gonna be green and red as well. 
Now, finally, I could also get rid of this grid in the background, these little dots. So what I'm gonna do is just uncheck this box down here that currently says grid. And now that those settings are changed, let's come over here and hit okay to see how that looks. So now looking down here, we changed those volume bars. We changed our candlesticks a little bit, got rid of that grid in the background, but there's definitely a lot that you could customize. So maybe tinker with that a little bit and see what works for you. But now moving on to the studies or indicators that we could add, we're always gonna find those by coming up here to the little beaker icon in the upper right hand corner. Now this little edit studies menu, once we open it up down here, first off, this is gonna show you all the studies we're currently using over here on the right. So currently they're all empty. And then we can see all the preloaded studies over here on the left-hand side. So if you scroll through these, there are quite a few, but we can always use the search box up here at the top to just quickly find the ones that we're looking for. So in my case, let's say we wanna add the 50 and 200 simple moving averages. So we're just gonna come up here and type in the word simple. And now because I wanna add both the 50 and 200, I'm gonna come down here and click on the simple moving average and hit add selected two times. We can then see both of them are over here on the right now, and you can see by default they went in the price section. That simply means that they're gonna be displayed on the actual chart itself. Because if they were in the volume section, they're gonna overlay the volume bars. If they were in the lower section, they're gonna appear below the chart. Now, generally these studies are gonna go exactly where they should, but you could always move them around if you wanted to. Not necessarily a recommendation because putting the simple moving average below the chart might not make a whole lot of sense, but technically you can do it by simply dragging and dropping them where you want them to go. Now, before we save this, remember I do need to edit them because right now they're both the nine period simple moving average. So to edit that, we're gonna go ahead and come over to the gear icon on the far right hand side. We can then adjust the length of this indicator by coming over here where it says nine and replacing that with 50. So this section up here above is basically how the study is gonna be calculated. And then down here below this bottom section, this is how it's gonna appear on the chart. It's gonna be how it looks. In this case, I'm happy with it being this teal color. So I'm gonna leave it be and I'm gonna hit okay. And then for the next one, we'll go ahead and edit that one as well. Remember this one's gonna be the 200 moving average. And because I wanna be able to tell them apart, I'm gonna come down to the color and change it from a teal color to a yellow color. I'm also gonna make it a little bit thicker of a line so it's easier to see. And now with that set, we'll come back over and hit okay and hit okay one more time. So now looking up here at the chart, we can see the 50 day moving average is the blue line, 200 day moving average is the gold line. And I don't think I mentioned it before, but if you ever wanna zoom in kind of like this right here, all you have to do is click and hold down with your mouse and then drag and highlight the area that you wanna zoom in on. So right now I basically zoomed in or highlighted two years worth of trading data. And if I let go, it's gonna zoom in on what I just highlighted. And then if I wanna zoom out, I can always just double click on the chart and it's gonna take me back to the full view. I could have also just used these little magnifying glasses in the lower right hand corner. Every time I click on it, it'll zoom me in 50% of the chart. Then I can always zoom out using the little minus button here. But generally, I prefer just to use the highlighting method and then double click when I want to go back. Now, another thing I'll point out is how we can look at multiple different charts at once. So let's just say not only did we want to see Tesla, we also wanted to have a chart open for Microsoft, Google, and Apple. So what we'll do in order to add those additional charts is come up here to the little grid icon or square icon in the upper right hand corner. Now, once you open that up, we're going to see a bunch of little squares down here below. And each one of these is an additional chart or tool that we could add. So in my example, I wanted to have four, two on top, two on bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these four squares and then click. You can then see we just added those three additional charts. And if I go ahead and throw in the symbols here, Microsoft, Google, and finally we'll throw in Apple over here. You'll notice that all of these charts go back to the default view. So they don't look like our new chart over here, they're all reset back to the default view we started with. Now, if you want all of your future charts, all the new charts that you add to look like this one by default, what we have to do is come up here to style at the top, then come down below where it says set as chart default. So this basically says anytime I make a new chart, I want it to look like this one by default. So if we go ahead and do that, 
We're going to go ahead and save it really quick. You're going to notice that the three charts over here stay exactly the same. They don't change automatically to match this one in the upper left. And that's just because that setting we changed only applies to future charts. It doesn't apply to these ones that we already made. So what we could do is actually just quickly go back up here, go back to one. And if we open back up four new charts again, and throw in the exact same symbols up here, you will actually see that those charts match exactly. And then if we wanted to link them together, so up here in the upper left hand corner, you can see this chart is linked to red one. If I wanted my watch list over here on the left to control this chart, I could always change the color link on the watch list to match. And now if we were to click a symbol over here in the watch list like Apple, you're going to see this chart in the upper left flips to Apple. If I wanted this chart to be controlled by the color yellow, if I were to come over here to my watch list again and change it back to yellow, now if I click on Meta, only that chart in the upper right changes to Meta. Or if I click on Triple Q, changes to Triple Q. If we wanted to add another indicator, if we go back up to just one chart for the time being, let's say we wanted to put RSI below our chart. So acting as a lower indicator, what we could do is come up here to the science speaker icon again, come over here to our search box on the left, and this time throw in RSI. We'll then go ahead and find and add it in the list below. And now you can see here it defaults to the lower study exactly how it should. And once we hit OK, we can now see it displayed right below our chart. Now, besides all of that, besides the time frames, the indicators, the different styles you could add, you also have access to all of these different tools over here on the far right hand side of each of your charts. A lot of people don't realize that this window doesn't actually have to be a chart. We could completely remove the chart by coming down here and just clicking on chart and you'll see it just completely disappears. We could then replace it with any of these tools over here like the option chain, or we could add phase scores, or we could add the level two data, or we could see all of this all at once if we wanted to by simply selecting every single one of these buttons. Now we definitely don't have enough time to get through all of these tools today. And if I'm being honest, you probably won't use the vast majority of them on a daily basis, but take your time, look through them and definitely customize your chart to your personal setup. Stick around for the next video where we're going to be remaining on the charts, but going through the different drawing tools that we can use on here. So things like trend lines, support and resistance lines, even the Fibonacci's. So click the link below to check that out and I'll see you there.